Chris Watkin here with Steve Wayne, one of North London's best known estate agents. Steve, you started your agency in 2004 when you were 22 years old and now you have a three office operation with 35 people under your remit being really successful growing year on year. I want to talk about your story from starting your agency at the age of 22 to where you are today. Talk to me. Fine. So it all started, um, I was working for someone else, I was looking after their office. What year was this then? So that would have been just as I hit 22, so 2003. How, how long had you been in the state agency? I'd done a year and a half of a corporate, I'd gone travelling for a year, and then I'd come back and done two years running someone's office for them. Independent agent? Independent agent. In North London? In our hometown, yeah. Okay. And are you enjoying life? What were you? Did you start off as a neg and work yourself Yeah, up? I was actually started off as a Saturday guy so one of my friends was working for the company he turned around and said Edgeware's looking for a Saturday boy do you want it so so how old are you this 18 17 17 not even driving okay and um, in my first Saturday I did two deals I was like this is easy and then I ended up doing an extra couple of days so I was doing two afternoons a week and so you finished school did you do your A-levels or I was doing A-levels yeah okay I was doing A-levels but because of the way college was I could do two afternoons and a Saturday and, and it worked well and I, I sort of fell in love with it quite quickly is your family background in sales or...? No, my parents had an art business for 30 years in the West End. Um, so my brother did do a state agency for a little while, so maybe that was influenced a little bit, but not really anything, you know, we, we weren't landlords, we didn't have properties. Did, did you know what you wanted to be when you were a teenager? Yeah, I wanted to be a footballer. <laughs> <laughs> Who to play for? Uh, QPR, obviously. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> um, but no, I, I don't think I'd really thought about it at that age. I didn't really think about what I wanted. I wanted to be successful, I wanted to be... A business person, but I didn't really think much further than that. So, did you kind of fall? That you, as you say, you kind of fell into a stage and like probably most people watching this. Yeah, I fell into it. I was, you know, I was sort of a little bit. There was a group of us who were that sort of age who were doing really well. We were like their little the golden children of, you know. Then it was a Spice McCall back in the day. I don't know if they yeah still exist, but you know they they looked, well, it's part of heart. Isn't yeah, it? and yeah. one thing with them, they were really good at training, and from a very young age, I understood the basics very well and. Even to this day, I'm still obsessed with some of the basics I got taught then. What were those sort of things? Just you know, the basics, like picking up the phone, talking to people. You know, you go and sell a house in a certain road. You go and pick up the sort of 20 people who have missed out on that house and tell them about the other house. I'm obsessed with canvassing. You know, I'm still a big believer. If you get on the, you know, you go and sell a house, you put leaf for everyone. Doors just sold. People want to know what's going on in their road. You know, yes, the social media stuff works, but the I'm still very obsessed with picking up the phone, speaking to people. You know, we've got a database of 50,000 people. We sell a house on a certain road. Pick up the phone, tell everyone in that road. Put a leaflet through their door, but pick up and speak to them. And we got told, you know, it was before right move, before Zoopla. You know, we waited. We're sitting there on a Thursday waiting for the phone to ring because the paper was coming out. Yeah. You know, you had to speak to applicants. You had to talk to people. And that's always been the fundamental part of my business is making sure that we work hard. So you left school. Did you go full-time then? Yeah, I went full-time for, for about a year. Okay. And it was good. Valuing, nagging, that? Yeah, I did my first valuation. I did my first valuation I remember going with with my senior manager at the time. I couldn't get my words out. I just literally, I think it was probably him. So they sent me out an evaluation a couple of days later, took it on sole agency, one and a half percent. And then it was just Off on my way. Went. Yeah. So you were in your late teens, you've been working there for a year. What did you decide to uh, go for a gap year or so, travelling? Unfortunately, the corporates do what the corporates do. They move people around. My manager left to go to another office. Another manager came in. Then, then he left. And another manager came in, and it just the, the company was changing, um, and it was just a good opportunity. You know, I always in the back of my mind wanted to do, and however much they they tried to convince me to stay, it was just it was a good time to do it. Okay, what year was this then? So I'll tell you when this was. This was because we were in Australia for the Olympics, so it would have been ninety nine two thousand. Okay, good stuff. So you, you, was, you spent a year in Oz or going around the country. What made you come back and start a state, go back into a state agency? Well, uh, it was... That was an independent now, wasn't yeah, it? Yes, so I was an independent. I, was, I came back and I was doing a lot of football coaching. And I realised that earning £10 an hour here, £12 an hour there, it wasn't a career. You know, I was in, I got into Watford and I was getting involved with that, but couldn't really see it as a full-time career at that point. So the opportunities came to get back into it and it, it, it worked well. I was very lucky. I worked for someone who let me run the business as if it was my own. Probably not the best thing for them, but worked for me. And it gave me, you know, I had no fear. 
you know, I was 20, 21 years old running someone else's business. Yeah, unheard of today putting a 21 year old in front running a business now, is there? Uh, I think if you're good enough, you're old enough. You know, we get, we've got some young guys with us and who are spectacular and you, d you don't even realise how old they are. So, but I don't think, I think people are a little bit more judgmental on age nowadays than probably they were then. Okay, okay. So, how long were you at this independent agent for then? Uh, just about two years. Okay, good. You enjoyed it all the time? Yeah, I loved it. I was, I, in the nicest way, he taught me what not to do. So, I was, you know, he was a brilliant valuer. So, we'd go out and do valuations together, but he was the kind of guy, and there's a lot of them out there, who would go and do a valuation, get on so well with people, not send a valuation letter. You know, he wouldn't do the follow up. And what I did with him is, when I went with him, I did the follow up. I did, you know, and we got a lot of business because of that. And if you've got good instructions, you sell them. And you know the rest is easy. Okay, so why aren't you still there now? Because he didn't want to look after me like I needed to. Okay, well, yeah. what, what were you missing out on? He just, you know, he was happy to pay me a small basic and commission, and even though I had a team. There was no, there was no future. You know, okay. I didn't know where it was going to go. And how did that make you feel? It doesn't make you feel great. You know, it, you know, when someone just wants to take, take, take from you and not look after you. Know, I've always said one of my philosophies when people meet me is. I don't want to be driving a Ferrari and my staff are in my office eating a value sandwich from Tesco's because they're poor. You know, if we're successful, we all need to be successful together. You know, and that's one thing, you know, my staff will tell you, I get agitated when people don't go and do things with their lives, when they don't, you know, go on holidays. You know, one of my guys, we're, you know, we're in no almost November and he hasn't taken a day off yet. I'm like, go and take a holiday. You need to. It's good for your insanity. You know, for me, it was always taught me how not to behave. Okay. You know, I want my guys to be successful and enjoy life as much as I could do. Okay. You, so you were getting frustrated at this point? Yeah, I was getting you? frustrated. Did you have any hopes or dreams at this point? Yeah, I think I always wanted to open up my own agency. You know, I remember when I was at Spice McCall, I had to, I was still at college, and I did a, um, a coursework. And my coursework was how to open up an estate agency in Edgeware. And my old area manager at the time took that to show as, a, as how it should be. He actually came back to work for me in my block management part of the company oh, yeah. and he turned around to me and goes I've still got it in my garage somewhere I was like I'd like it back at some point so what situation arose where you basically said stop this I'm going to start my own agency ironically it was one of my famous nights out um, it was my 22nd birthday okay. I think I must have been drinking and he did something that agitated me and I sort of threw my toys out of the pram and said so do you I'm going to go open up on my own um, and this was in the August and um, it probably wasn't the best way of doing it but, you know, my mum made me go back and apologise. And pretty much from that moment, he knew that I was on my way out. So you'd, in a, after having a couple of lager shandies, you, you kind of blew up in front of your yeah, boss. Yeah, there might have been some tequilas in there as well. Okay. And you, you, you apologised. So you went back. Yeah, I apologised. You know, I, th I, I think I did the right thing. And the interesting thing is he then at the Christmas let me go. Now, that was a real turning point in my life. In all honesty, if he wouldn't have said that, I might still be there now. And the whole story could be very different. What excuse did they use to let you go? He knew what I was had planning. Like we sort of built the website, and you know it was something. It was always a joke in the office, you know, that Steve was going to open on his own. But whether or not I would or wouldn't have without that kick, who knows? So um, it was a big, it was a big turning point. What fears did you have for starting your own agency? I was very lucky. I was 22 years old. I lived at home. I had a couple of investments, so I had money coming in monthly. I didn't have. A fear you know my parents were very I come from a very entrepreneurial background they had their own business brothers had his own business you know so I didn't have that that fear that maybe some do and I had very supportive parents who said look we're here to help you and throughout the journey you know the amount of times my mum's been spotted in my office when everyone's out on viewings you know I'm very very lucky on from that point I had very 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 supportive parents who said go and do it so yes there's always a fear you know are people gonna take me seriously you know a lot of the other agents would always have a mouth off on valuations that would call us kids, you know. And you know the nice, the ironic thing is, even now they still look at me like a kid. But you know, we're now the biggest agent in the area, and we, you know, we've got twenty percent market share in an area which is, you know, there's seventeen, eighteen agents. What hopes did you have for starting your own agency back in two thousand and four? Same as I have today. I want to be the best. Okay. I want to be the biggest, and we want to have the, you know, and when I mean best, we want to have the best reputation. You know, I've always wanted to make sure that I sleep at night. I don't want to do anything. Don't get me wrong, there's been points where things have happened and they're not right, but we've never gone and intentionally done the wrong thing. And that was always very, very important to me. But the first 10 years of the business was a reputation. You know, people come to see me now for job interviews and come and see me. 
And the one thing they always say is your reputation is on point. And it, that was always a big thing for me. It was not about the money. It was about the success and doing things properly. But anyone could have opened an estate agency in 2004 and been successful, couldn't they? No, because there was five or six other people that opened that, that year, some of them my age, and none of them are still standing. Okay. You know, So I think what we had and what was different was we had the pure obsessiveness to succeed. You know, we'd canvas, we'd door knock, we'd canvas, we'd canvas. And then when we got a, a hint of an instruction, we'd work our hardest we could to make sure we got that sold for the best price and all along you know keeping that high level of customer service and I think that's what separated us is we actually cared about our clients it wasn't just about the deal it was about you know doing the right thing and doing the best by them. How did you cope when you got to 2007 early 2008 when the market went tits up? So that's when my business partner started to uh, have wobbles and that's when he ended up leaving the business. Okay so how many offices had you by this point? We had two, so we had Edgeware and we had Collendale. What made you jo What made you go into business with somebody else? <sighs> I think it, at that age it was the right thing to do. I think looking was that back, always straight away. Or? Yeah, from the beginning. Ironically, he actually had an opportunity just as we were starting to go somewhere else. Someone offered him big money to go somewhere else, and he ended up turning it down and coming with me. But he was about two weeks. I sort of started the first few weeks on my own. Um, do you but, think there was some regret there that you didn't take it? Um, no, I think for me, I think I needed a business partner. You know, you need that bounce. From him, from, I meant. Uh, maybe, I don't know. I don't, you know, once we've, 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 I see him now here and about through the same sort of socialist, social circle. But he, I don't know what his thoughts are. And, you know, seeing us grow, I don't know how his thoughts on that either. So what, what led you to a point where basically you and your business partner split up in 07, 08? The market was bad, you know, but it was bad for everyone and we were still, you know, three years into the journey. And as I said, I bought a couple of investment properties, so I didn't need money on a monthly basis. I did need it, but I didn't desperately need it. Whereas he was starting a relationship, thinking about the next part of life and needed that money. And, you know, I wasn't lucky because I, I made those choices to get those properties, but I lived at home. I sort of put the business first, which I've always done. So rather than going out wild on a Saturday night, I'd stay in, you know, rather than going out on a Thursday night I'd stay work late and work late and I did what I had to do to get me through it and how did you get through that that you know when did you start to see the light at the end of the tunnel um ironically after he left we ended up having an opportunity to take another office and we went for that but I think where what the year was this probably 2009 okay so really at the bottom of the market yeah we got we, we got a really good office in a really good area where um, was that? In Bushy, mm -hmm. so just south of Watford, um, in a really nice town. It's a really, really nice area with good fees and good properties. And then we we walked away from Collendale. You know, Collendale's a mile from Edgeware. I think the last straw was when days consecutively, I'd go into Edgeware in the morning and the same applicants would come into Collendale in the afternoon. And I'm like, what am I doing? And this is just as right move and Zoopla was starting to get their, their ways going. And you didn't need free offices, you didn't need free right moves, free Zooplas. You know, you've got to have a minimum level of staff for each office. You know, and it just, it was the same people coming in or could have done and we just now do business in that area and beyond from our Edgeware office. Was it hard to close an office now? Yeah, it was massive, m massively. Did you have to let people go? No, we didn't let people go, um, but it was my ego more than anything else. You know, we gave it a couple of shots. You know, we had someone who renting desk space off us at one point. You know, we had someone who came in and wanted to be a partner in the office. You know, I sort of tried everything, which I probably shouldn't have done. I should have probably walked away from it earlier, but... <laughs> Do you think there's a lot of agents out there that probably stick with outlying offices when in reality they should be pulling the plug? Yeah, because it's ego. You know, people don't want to be seen to be failing. You know, people want to be seen to, you know, one of my friends owns a massive business outside the estate agency. He's just bought a, a big house. And one of the things I said to him is, you don't, you're, you don't understand this. As an estate agent, it's a very public business. People can see if you're successful or not. You know, people go and look on right, you've seen what properties you've got, see what you've sold. Whereas in other industries, you just get on with your business and no one's got a clue what you're doing. So there's a lot of vanity in a state agency, you know, so you've got to, you know, you've got to be brave and, and cut the dead wood. Do you think we worry too much about what other people think massively, about us? Massively, um, One of a good friend of mine, Stephen Brown, you know him well. Good friend. His best line is, is it best for the business? And he told me that three or four years ago, and it's true, you know, are you doing, I'm not the business, the business is business. And you've got to follow what's best for the business, and you know, the reality was Collindale wasn't best for the business. It was best for my ego to tell people that I had three offices. You know, I'd rather have two offices which are successful. And I think this is a massive problem with a lot of the corporates. 
you know they they don't want to close down an office because of it of how it looks, not necessarily because it's good for your business. So. 2009, 2010, the London market started to, started to improve. To um, what were you doing then? H how was the business at that point? Yeah, as, as the market improved, and as probably as well as I got older, you know, and a little bit more maturer, things got better. We started being able to hire better people. Um, and that was important, you know. The problem, one of the biggest problems for me as a young person, I was 22, 23 when I reopened. A 40 year old didn't want to come work for me. Okay, so now you're in your late 20s in 09, 010. Yeah, and it starts changing, and people start looking at you in a different way. You've been open for five, six years. You know, you've gone past those X amount of businesses that closed in the first five years, and people can see that you're obviously doing something right. Are you enjoying it at this time? I love it. You know, I, even today, I still enjoy what I do. I enjoy running the business. It's, it's a part of me. And what, what things were getting in your way or holding you back in 10, 11, 12 when things were starting to take off again? Um, I, look, I, I was still at an age where I'd go out on a Thursday night, Friday night. I'd still, you know, be enjoying life, you know, chasing. Were you married things. at this point? No, no, I got married later. So that was obviously also a big change. Is once once you have a, a wife who bullies you, <laughs> and you know, kids come in, things change because you push yourself out a little bit harder. Um, but you know, at that point, we were enjoying it and we we were doing good business and we were growing and growing, you know. And I think once we got in Bushy, it opened up a different clientele for us. And obviously a lot of people move from Edgware to Bushy, they're quite, you sort of okay. have your family home in Edgware and you sort of end up, some people will sell their big house and move to a nice flat in Bushy. So the market was flying along in 12, 13, 14, 15. How were you on your journey of being the biggest and the best? Yeah, we were definitely the best we were starting to get. We were starting to forge a really good reputation of being good, honest agents. Our lettings was growing, our sales were growing. And then your staff start staying with you longer, you know, and... Once someone's been with you a year, two years, three years, then people walk back in. No, oh, Michael, you're still here, you know. And that made a big difference, you know. We're sitting at the moment where four or five of my staff have been with me eight years plus. You know, we've got a couple of people coming up for anniversaries of ten years now. And that's a big thing that people will turn around and they trust people. They trust that I'm looking after my staff, the fact that they're staying there. So what have you done to ensure that your staff stay? Because I know you're a tight bugger, so you don't pay particularly well. Uh, Completely opposite. I play pay too well. Okay. Um, we really look after our staff, monetary wise. We look after them as people. We make them feel that they're part. Do of the you business. have to pay the highest amount? No, you don't have to pay the highest amount. You have to pay well. You have to pay well. You have to pay well to get them in. Okay. And I've never had someone leave because of money, and nor would I ever. But at the end of the day, our business is about commission. You know, and and a quality of life. You know, a lot of my staff live within a couple of miles of the office, so rather than getting up at seven in the morning, they can get up at eight o'clock. You know, there's a big, big difference in that extra hour, hour and a half a day for commute. I was talking to someone the other day, came for an interview. It's commuting an hour and a half each way a day. I just couldn't think of anything worse. You know, we're t I'm 12 minutes journey to work. Um, but, you know, we had a couple of girls who've gone, had babies come back, gone, had babies come back. And we've made their, their day flexible. We've mailed to, they want to work three days, they work three days, they want to work five. But we've got good infrastructure that if they need to work from home, they can work from home. You know, and I think I've tried to look after myself. I've got a very good relationship with each one of them. Understood. Well, I've been, I went to your offices a couple of months ago and, and you could tell there was a nice electricity in the air in a good way. Yeah, we're, we're a family, okay. you know. When someone, you know, does something to the business, they take it as badly as I do, you know. In fact, sometimes they take it, you know, more personally than I do. I've sort of got to a stage that people are people. Now, in 2016, if memory serves you well, there was actually a business at the back of your office that you went and bought. Yes. Tell, the, tell what was that all that about? So that was a block management business. Um, which I know nothing about, you know, and we've taken a business which is very much a very old school way of doing business, like the way he worked and the way I have complete polar opposites. And we've now started to turn that into a successful business. Is he still in the business? He works upstairs and does a little bit of investments. He's there if I need him, but not in the business as such. He comes in three days a week, plays more golf than does anything else. And, and what's that added to your firm? It's given us a different approach. It's obviously given us a massive database of people who are, you know, most people renting flat in living in a block of flats of a block of 20 probably 14 of them are rented so they've given us a whole bunch of landlords but it's just given us a little bit more of a professional level of a business you know people who do block management are very different to people who do estate agency but what i've tried to do with that business is bring in what i know as a marketer as an estate agent into that business which where people really don't market you know it's it's 30 years behind estate agency. It's interesting you called yourself a marketer first then an estate agent afterwards. I've always said to people that I'm a businessman, marketer first. You know, I'm not not what you call your typical estate agent. Um, I think I've always been business first, 
and I think that's what, probably one of the things that's worked well for me as well. So when did you decide to open up and go down the self-employed route? So the self-employed employed route is something I've thought about for years and I've tried before and I tried it maybe four or five years ago. So that would be 2014, 15? Yeah, when the market was good but the tech wasn't good enough. So people were almost using, do you remember log me in? So people were almost logging in into the system and it just, it didn't work. You know, I had m spent more time trying to sort out their IT problems than I did trying to help them sell houses. So it's always been something which I've believed is the future of the business. You know, the reality is it all comes full circle. I don't think there's enough people, people don't earn enough money. Why don't people earn enough money? Because on a basic and a commission, it's always in the, in the right in the way of the owner. So people take a bit of risk, they earn a little bit more. And, uh, you know, for me, it's always been something that it's there. One of the guys who works for me has been on commission only for 10 years, self-employed, if you want to call it that way. And he earns pound for pound. If he was up against one of my negs and they did the same business, he'd earn a lot more. And did you have any fears when you started this time around? Yeah, look, I, the biggest fear for me was brand protection. You know, when you turn around someone and say you can earn 50% of what you bring in, the biggest worry for me is they'll just do bad business. You know, and that's, that's my, that was my biggest fear, that they would go and ruin the brand. Okay. So we looked at maybe going, taking a franchise. But after consideration, we decided to stick with our own brand. And how long has that, that self-employed model been going now? Just over a year. Okay. And what hopes do you have for that? Uh, we want to, we, I think it's the future of the industry. Yes. And there's maybe four or five companies doing it, and doing okay. it well, all in our own different ways. Um, I, you know, for us, we want to be one of, the, you know, when it, 10 years down the line, we want to be the one of the top two or three companies in the country who are doing that. You know, if you really want to go, I'd like to have a, a thousand agents working for me, working with me. And when it works, it's perfect. It's yes. a brilliant concept, but it's not for everyone. And I think the biggest issue is people don't realize how strong some of the companies they work for are. Or how bad they actually are and how lucky they are to work for some of those companies. Well, maybe in the in the next video, we could talk about your learnings, your teachings, your thoughts on the self-employed model after a year and your plans for the future in a lot more detail. So those people who, on both sides of the fence, yeah. those who are looking to join a be a self-employed agent and also the bosses that might want to do that, maybe you could teach the guys out there. What I can tell you what I've learned, which is a hell of a lot. I'll tell you that. Excellent. Well, let's have a chat with that. Thanks Perfect. very much.